Welcome back to Flashpoint. Charlotte is booming and growing and getting more crowded. And let's be honest, our infrastructure has not kept up. This week, the city task force studying how to pay for the eight to $12 billion transit plan finalized their recommendations to city council. The transfer pay, transformational uh, mobility network plan includes having 110 miles of rapid transit corridors like light rail, 140 miles of busing, 115 miles of greenway system, 75 miles of a bicycle network and more. So comes the logical question, how do we pay for it? Some money from the state, some from the feds, but, but a huge chunk is gonna come from, you guessed it, all of us. And a property tax increase, a sales tax increase. Uh, don't worry though, this is all gonna go before the voters, um, before anything's finalized. Uh, Tark, I'll begin with you. How do we pay for something uh, so massive, but by most accounts, sorely needed? It goes back, I think, somewhat to the last topic of we certainly should be talking to the General Assembly. And um, I have, again, heard in back channels a, a lot of head scratching and concern already um, for this to be kind of at, at the point it's at in a community dialogue, which is concerning and something we obviously need to fix. I, I, I have two major issues with this, though, myself. And, I, and I'm actually not totally against the, the concept of it. It just needs to be something that, you know, we call a spade a spade and, and we approach it thinking about what it does the right way. The first one is, you know, we're on the verge of a major disruption in transportation with autonomous vehicles. But this is something that we've never seen before. And predictions are, you know, by 2022, we're going to see everyday usage of autonomous vehicles on the road. And I think which cities have prepared their infrastructure is gonna determine in the years that follow, not many, where it becomes ubiquitous. So we're about to make one of the largest gambles in Charlotte's history on fixed light rail, essentially. There are other things in it, but that, that's kind of the angle. And while I know it has impacts from an economic development perspective, you can look in South End, the question is, is it moving people, a transportation impact? And I think the, the verdict's out alone, let alone the whole world of transportation is about to change. So I just, it concerns me is all, is all I'm saying. And I wanna make sure we analyze this from the right perspective. And I think that's why we're having the conversation. I don't disagree with, with Tark's point at all. I, I do think I've said and continue to say you cannot pave your way out of congestion. I do think autonomous vehicles are going to change the whole landscape of transportation and mobility. But I also think, you know, we've got a president elect now who we know is a very big fan of rail. Uh, I think he's going to be a very pro transit president and have a very pro transit administration. And so, you know, we've, it's got to be a partnership with the state. It's got to be a partnership with the federal government. But we've also got to have all our ducks in a row to make sure that we can capitalize on those opportunities if and when they present themselves. And that's why we're taking the time and spending the money right now to have a plan in place that we can execute. And, and funding is obviously going to be the biggest piece of whether or not this ever actually comes to fruition. But I think. Uh, if we don't do the work to be ready, uh, we won't even have the opportunity to figure out how to pay for it or, or to make it happen. And, and this will, whatever is decided upon about, uh, among you and your colleagues, uh, voters will have a say in this uh, next year, is that true? Uh, I don't know that the timing is set in stone, but I think okay. that's certainly a possibility. All right, uh, just real quickly, we want to talk about uh, the coronavirus. Uh, numbers keep rising. North Carolina also preparing to receive a vaccine. As concerning as the numbers are, I and many other North Carolinians have newfound hope in the development of promising vaccines. Moderna and Pfizer both have produced vaccines with remarkable early results, better than health experts ever hoped for. Governor Cooper adding that North Carolina will get the uh, Pfizer vaccine. The state could start receiving vaccines as early as December 18th. Both of Charlotte's major hospital systems say they will be ready to receive and give out that vaccine. The state will prioritize the vaccine for health care workers first. Additional high risk adults could start getting rec uh, vaccinations by January. Residents of long term care facilities such as nursing homes will also get vaccinated in the early stages of the distribution. Real quickly, gentlemen, is the city involved in any of this or is this mainly state county stuff? Because I know the health department's county. Yeah, mainly state, mainly state and county with the health department, obviously the leadership there. But um, 
but you know i think it is it, it's impactful to the work we do on the city government side too because um tark's vice chair of the economic development committee for our, our city the economic impacts right now in our city are so dire I mean, we're going to lose so many more restaurants so many hotels so many small businesses we've already we're, we're seeing that every week um this vaccine can can hopefully you know plug the hole in that dam in terms of of the money that's just bleeding out of our small business community right now all right gentlemen i've got to run time's up thank you both for coming on don't be strangers come back soon lock and Tark Bakari, Charlotte city councilman more flash point after this <laughs>